We've discussed how, mechanically, SCs and SCCs can be conceptualized as a two-part lock and key model for unlocking protected Linux functionality. In terms of personnel, the same mechanism can be conceptualized as an agreement between three personas, a developer, a deployer, and an administrator. The developer is the individual who writes an application to perform jobs that require access to protected Linux functions in order to do its job. So that might be someone from Amy's CIO office that we covered in part one. And the deployer is the person who crafts the deployment manifest, that YAML file, the inventory of all the protected Linux functions that the application needs. And that request is then relayed via the container of the pod, which will use the manifest to petition the cluster's SCCs for access to those functions. The developer and the deployer might very well be the same person in some cases. The important distinction is that the developer is generally interested only in writing the code in the application to do the job, whereas the deployer is concerned with how that application code is implemented and executed within the constraints of the cluster environment. In the previous section, where we attempted to deploy application code to a container on Red Hat OpenShift, we assumed the role of the deployer. A third person, the administrator, is the person who sets up the cluster level SCCs that determine what level of access, if any, to protect the Linux functions and permissions that we can make to the OpenShift cluster environment. So in other words, in that section as a deployer, we were making requests to that third person, the administrator, someone from Brady's team, on what permissions we can have access to. Now let's summarize what we've learned so far about security contexts, security context constraints, and the procedure that pods must follow in deploying containerized applications in a secure fashion. We'll examine that using the blueprint that is shown on your screen here and within your documentation. At bullet one, a developer from Amy's team writes an application request that has access to protected Linux functions. In bullet two, a deployer, likely also from Amy's team of developers, authors a YAML-based deployment manifest with instructions and requests regarding access to those protected Linux functions from the containerized application code. The deployment manifest must contain a security context, so an SC, that explicitly states the protected Linux functions that are being requested by the containerized application. Furthermore, it must also specify a service account to which those permissions will be granted should the security context constraints or SCCs of that cluster agree with the SCCs that are being requested by the YAML manifest file. In the third bullet, an administrator from Brady's team manages the cluster's SCCs, which govern and protect the Linux functions that are grantable to service accounts and the pods and containerized applications associated to those accounts. Role-based access control, or RBAC, roles can also be used to indirectly assign SCCs to service accounts, should the administrator not want to issue SCC permissions on an account-by-account -account basis. We'll dig into how to set those roles and groups up yourself later on in this hands-on material. SCCs defined by Brady's team, as well as default SCCs available out of the box with a standard OpenShift deployment, are compared against the requested SCs of the deploying pod on bullet four. And finally on bullet five, if the requested SCs are within the permitted boundaries of the defined SCCs, the SCCs will grant permissions to that pod to be deployed and the containerized application will be pushed into a live production state on the OpenShift cluster with access to those permitted and protected Linux functions that were requested as part of the deployment manifest. For those so inclined for further hands-on testing of SCs and SCCs, we've cherry-picked some useful techniques for managing SCCs on an OpenShift cluster as normal API objects that are using the same OCCLI that you've been using so far throughout the lab instructions. Note that you need to have cluster admin level privileges in order to manage SCCs on an OpenShift cluster. So if you provision this lab using a rocks or a multi-tenant environment, you'll likely encounter permission restrictions and errors when attempting to perform those actions.